Hello and welcome to another French Eek's Top Tip video. I'm Craig Phillips, their brand ambassador. In this video, I'm going to show you where to stop and start when you're painting a door and frame two different colours between two rooms. Now this side in the living room area, the door and frame is already beautifully finished with French Eek's Wise Old Sage. However, in the hallway, I want this door painted a completely different colour. Likewise, with the frame. But what we need to do is distinguish where we stop and start between two different colours. Like with all woodwork, before you start any form of preparation, give it a good clean down. Mix up some sugar soap with warm water, scrub all the surfaces, rinse it through and then dry it off. So let's focus on the frame first. As you can see, the entire frame is painted in the same colour, the wise old sage, the living room side and the hallway side but I'm going to start my different colour on the edge of this slam strip here because when our door closes, it comes across past the architrave, halfway through the frame and it hits this slam strip there to stop it going any further. So I'm going to keep the Wise Old Sage colour all the way through the frame on one section of the slam strip, which is here, and this line is where I'm going to start to paint my different colour. And to make it easier and quicker so I get a nice straight line, I'm going to apply some masking tape on that inner closing edge of the slam bead. The paint colour I'm using is Victory Lane and again it's from the Alfresco range. It's suitable for indoors and outdoors. It's very durable, tough and hard wearing, which makes it the perfect choice for all your woodwork in and around your home and garden. I tend to cover the area first, then lightly feather the paint out. I do this straight away, not applying any more or any less paint on. This helps me spread the paint evenly and adds to a smoother finish. So getting the right amount of paint on is really important and then just slowly feather it up and down until you're happy with the first layer. Then you can remove your masking tape before the paint is dried, leave this for two hours under normal conditions, then it's ready for a second coat. Whilst the first coat of paint is drying on the outside frame, I'm going to turn my attention to the inside of the room. As you know, the door, the frame, the architrave is all painted in the wise old sage. That's had two coats, it's finished and it's beautiful. Likewise with this opening edge here as well. So we've got the wise old sage on here and again on this opening edge. Now, the outside of the door, this is going to be my second colour as well as this closing inner edge along here as well. So the one colour on here and the one colour on there, which of course is going to be Victory Lane. The Alfresco range of paint is self-priming, meaning no primer or undercoat is required. It's also self-sealing as well as self-leveling. It's EN713 certified, meaning it's safe to use on children's toys. When painting these panels, I tend to apply the paint across here first and then start to squeeze it tight into my corners. But of course, these are recessed, they're quite deep, got mited little corners. And these are the vulnerable bits where you're going to get drips. So apply the paint on first, making sure you've got plenty then on your brush, but it's not dripping. And then press the brush tight into the corners and drag it across. All the while, you've got to be considerate. There's a little lip just on the end of here that you don't want to catch. And then press the edges of the brush tight into the corner and drag them down. And then once you've got all the paint on and it's looking good, you can feather over it really lightly with the brush, not putting any more paint on, nor taking any more off. Now this particular door isn't a real wooden door. However, it does have the grain effect on there to give it the impression. 
So when you're painting, make sure you follow the grain and paint across the bars, up and down, all left to right, following the nature and the shape of the door. Now I will be using my glasses because this is the important bit. I'm now coming to this last bar on the door and I want to cut it in to the different colour on this opening edge. So, like the frame, you can run a line of masking tape along the edge of there if you're not that confident on cutting it yourself with your brush, but I'm going to give it a go. So first I'm going to apply a fair amount of paint on that edge, not quite up to the edge. I'm just working my way towards it as I'm brushing up and down. And then once I have got a fair bit on there, I can then bend the edge of my brush and just start to strike that line. So the key is not to overload your brush bend it, make it a little bit more rigid as you're coming across that edge. And keep feathering it as you do on the rest of the door. Now on the hinged edge of the door where it's bare wood, it's okay to go directly on there with alfresco paint being self-priming. I personally choose to go across the hinge. I know this isn't everybody's choice, but I think it looks okay. Now the paintwork I did to start with on the frame has now had it to two hours, so it's dry enough for a second coat. I'm applying this the same as I did on the first coat. However, I'm not masking it up. I'm just cutting the edges in freehand. Now my first coat of paint has had two hours to dry. It's ready for its second coat. However, if this was a real wood door, a hardwood or a softwood door, do rub your hands all over it because what you find is the first coat of paint tends to penetrate into the actual wood itself and draw the grain out a little bit and it might feel a little bit rough. This particular one doesn't because it's an artificial door so it's still nice and smooth after the first coat so I can paint now directly on top of that with my alfresco paint. If your door is real wood and it feels a little rough after the first coat, don't worry, give it a gentle sand down before applying the second coat. I'm going to apply the second coat on with my paintbrush using the same method as the first coat. Then once this is dried, it's complete. If you were applying your paint on with a small handheld paint sprayer, then the paint would require diluting by about 10%. Therefore, I'd apply three coats on with your paint sprayer. Now, I wasn't completely happy with the line that I cut in with the paintbrush on the front opening edge of my door. Therefore, I'm running a line of masking tape along there to apply the second coat. This way, I know I'm going to get a perfect sharp finish. So that's my version on how you paint one door and frame two different colours between rooms. However, the jury is out whether my version is preferred or not because others choose to paint the outside colour all the way across the slam bead, which I did, and retain it just on that little edge here. So I decided to go to the outside edge. Some people choose to go to the inside edge. So I'm going to show you both versions. So the choice really is yours. This one or this one? This or this one? This or this one? Now standing out here in the hallway with the door closed, all we can see is that beautiful victory lane right the way around the frame and across all of the door. None of the other colour from the other side. And when we look at it from the other side, of course the door is closed and all we can see is wise old sage right across the door, the frame and the architrave, which is exactly how we want it. If you're looking for more how-to videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Frenchie TV. Or if you're just looking for some inspiration, check out the Frenchie Fan Forum on Facebook. And if you want to know more about the products, visit the website, frenchiepaint.co.uk.